everyone and welcome to stamp and chat live i am gina from gina k designs and it's great to see all of you coming in from all around the world today's video is a premiere which means that tom and i recorded this a little bit ahead of time because we couldn't be in the studio at the time when we normally have our stamp and chat live but we are able to be in the comments so if you check the comments today or you're commenting in the chat the live chat tom and i'll be in there to answer your questions and to say hello to everybody so today we're going to have a lot of fun because i'm going to show you a fun way to mix embossing powder with your stencils and this is such a fun technique and it looks so pretty gives that little bit of shine to your cards especially holiday cards and i think you're really gonna enjoy trying this yourself but before we get started let's say hello to tom hey tom hello over there <laughs> how are you doing today <laughs> doing great better than horrible that's all that matters now for our new people watching you can see tom is back there in the dead space the dead <laughs> The dead space is actually across the room from where I am standing. And Tom, how did the dead space come about? Well, yeah, for the uh, newbies, the dead space, uh, when I first started um, joining Gina on these lives, she said, your job is to fill in the dead space. <laughs> and so that's where I'm working from, the dead space, trying my best to fill it in. Doesn't You're doing a happen. great job. <laughs> Yeah, so great fun. Funny. So there's a lot of, of things that emanate from the dead space that really have nothing to do with crafting and uh, kind of a distraction from what's really important on this show. But um, nonetheless, the dead space. Nonetheless, everybody loves it. We love your music. We love your word of the day. The dead space is the fun space. Up here in the bright space, that's where all the craftiness happens. So let's get started with that right away. And then we'll see you in a little bit, Tom. All right. All right. So we're going to use a stencil set today called Christmas Flowers. And I love this one. This is a stencil that my daughter, Alicia, designed. Let me back out a little bit. We're a little close. She designed this for us. I had said to her that I wanted to do another poinsettia stencil because we have that real big one that she designed. And I said, but I wanted something that had more than one poinsettia. And she said, oh, mom, let's do a different style this time, which she did. And I absolutely love this one. So we're going to be using this today. And I will tell you that when doing certain types of techniques, even though the stencils are marked as layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four, you do not have to use them in order if you're doing certain techniques. So we are going to go out of order today. Now I have a few pieces of cardstock here that are cut to three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch. You can also use our Master Layouts 2 die set to do this. And I am going to do two different versions of this card. One I'm going to do in reds and golds and one I'm gonna do in blues and silvers. So depending on whether you're sending a Happy Holidays card or more of a Merry Christmas card, you can kind of create whatever you want. And remember, cards like this, you're not subject to reality when you're crafting. So if points, if poinsettias are usually red or white and you wanna do yours in purple, have at it. Do it whatever color combination you want. So I'm gonna start here with this layer one and I wanna make sure that I get most of this bottom flower in here and then these are gonna go off the edges. This goes off the edge a little bit, but that'll be my main flower for the purpose of this card. And I'm gonna start with my card that's gonna be done in reds. So I'm gonna start with the color red velvet, and then my complementary color for this is going to be faded brick. So I need kind of a medium and a darker color. Now, if you wanted to use some of our 
carnations or our orchids for this, you certainly could do that as well. So let's start with the red velvet. Now I do have a little faded brick on this brush because I was playing with some other cards earlier. So I'm just going to take a paper towel and rub that color off. There we go. And that gets me back to just a plain red. Now you can also use red hot if you don't have red velvet. Any bright red will do. And we're going to start by going right in the center of each of these flowers. And just with a circular motion, we're going to create a nice layer of red. And we're going to get a little bit lighter as we go toward the edges. Okay, like that. And even though this is going quite a bit off the cardstock here, we're still going to keep that same kind of circular brush motion so it looks very even, the blending. And then again, this one's starting right in the middle, heavy in the middle, getting with a lighter hand as we work our way out toward the edges. We still want color on those petals, but we just want that color to be very light compared to the rest. Okay. So now we've got our first layer on here. Now we're going to go to the next layer, which is going to be not this one, which says layer two, but we're going to do our leaves next. So we just want to make sure that those leaves fit in there. You can see how they're fitting in there nicely. And this is a very easy stencil to line up, so it's, it, it won't cause you any difficulty at all. And now we're going to move to our greens. Now I'm going to be using two greens today. I'm going to be using fresh asparagus and jelly bean. Now jelly bean is going to be my main leaf color and I'm going to use a larger blending brush for this. And then my accent color for these leaves is going to be fresh asparagus. Now although these are single layer leaves, you only have one layer, you can create a lot of shading by adding a second color to that one layer. And that's what we're going to do today. So you can see this is a nice bright pop of green. And that's what we want. We want that nice bright pop of green. And I'm not worrying too much about, you know, getting solid color. I love when it looks a little more shaded. I think that looks very beautiful. It's totally fine. And you know our ink has a smoothing agent in it, so it's going to smooth out and look very, very well blended, almost airbrushed once it all dries. Then we're going to move to the fresh asparagus, and we're going to create fresh asparagus just down at the bottoms of each of these petals, each of these leaves, where it appears to be coming out of the flower. Can see that really creates a lot of beautiful depth and you'll be able to see it a lot more when I take the stencil off. But I love doing this with a single layered stencil. It makes it appear as though there's more than one layer and it also gives you that same kind of look that we all try to achieve with Copic markers and colored pencils and Gamsol where we've got darks and lights in there. All right, so now we have that layer done and look at how beautiful the leaves look. Just that dark to light is so pretty. Now my next layer is going to be the dots, but I'm not going to put um, any color in the centers of these flowers. I'm just going to accent around the outside. But, and, and you can cover up those centers if you want with a little bit of masking magic if you want to be sure not to get any color in there especially if you're a heavy-handed stenciler so I would just take a little masking magic strip like this and just pop it over the center of each of those if that makes you feel more comfortable I don't think I need to do that though because those dots are pretty far away and I am going to use a small stencil brush with some Tranquil Teal ink, and I'm just going to go over those dot areas. But I wanted you to see that in case you're one of those people that has, maybe you have big stencil brushes, or maybe you just like to go over the whole thing and not worry about being directional in your stenciling. But I'm just going to go over these little dots right here, so I'm not too worried about it. Stenciling's but pretty cool. It's it super seems cool. like a neat thing to do with kids. Oh, it's definitely a cool thing to do with kids. You know, I mean, it's great for beginners too, beginner card makers, and kids kind of fall into that category. 
it's so easy to be successful because all of the art and everything is in the layers. Plus, you can get your kids in an assembly line. You can give each kid a layer and have them do their layer and pass it down. And you can get all your cards mass produced by your kids or your grandkids. How's that for an idea? Wow. <laughs> yeah, and there's something about it that teaches like delayed gratification because it's like you don't get to see it until you until you peel and you reveal work on it and then you <laughs> bam yeah yes exactly exactly all right so let's get our delayed gratification here look at that isn't that so pretty i love this stencil okay so now we're going to do the final layer and then we're going to do the technique then we're gonna do the whole thing again in a different color combination. So we're laying layer two on top and you can see once you get it all in the right place, all the little white lines disappear. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add that second layer of red color. In this case, I'm gonna be using faded brick. Tomato soup would also be a nice color because it wouldn't necessarily be darker, but it would add a little bit more orange into it. But I'm going to use faded brick because that's a nice deep, deep red. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my brush real well with faded brick. And then I'm going to add that faded brick on there. And you can see that is definitely deep and beautiful. It also has quite a bit of orange in it. Faded brick is much more orangey than a true red, but they look really pretty together. Now for the purpose of this technique, I'm gonna actually peel the stencil off. And you can see the second layer on there, how it kind of brings some depth in. But I'm gonna clean this stencil and then I'm gonna put it back on. Now when you clean your stencil, you can clean it with just some water. I've got a little Windex here that I'm gonna clean mine with. But remember, whenever you're cleaning a stencil, always go and dry the back of the stencil too because whatever you're cleaning it with can seep through and make your stencil wet on the back and then that will ruin your project. So you wanna make sure your stencil is nice and dry on the back as well before you reapply it. Okay. So now I'm gonna put this right back over the same spot. And here's where we're going to add our shine. Okay, looking good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a sponge dauber and I love our new sponge daubers. They're nice and squishy and they're perfect for pouncing any kind of pigment ink or um, embossing and watermark ink, any thicker, slower drying ink into a stenciled area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pounce on this um, embossing and watermark ink pad to pick up ink and then holding the stencil in place I do want to make sure that I have it in place I feel like it's a little off up here at the top so let's just get that right in place there there we go that's good there we go okay now I'm going to pounce this embossing and watermark ink into the stenciled area. You can almost see it getting dark when you do this, so you know that you've got ink into those areas. I'm gonna do the same thing again. These sponge daubers are really nice. You can also use these for regular ink blending, but it's hard to use a blending brush with these thicker inks because first of all, they dry on your bristles kind of crunchy where they don't seem to dry on these sponges crunchy at all. And then it's hard to like, I don't know, it doesn't get on there as smooth as it does when you're using something like a sponge dauber like this. And these are our new daubers. They're available in our store and I, people are really liking them. They're very economical. And you only need a couple of them for your, you know, your slow drying inks because you can use blending brushes for anything that's fast drying. Okay, I think we've got it in there pretty well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Gina K Designs Fine Detail Clear Powder. You'll have to forgive my jar of powder. I've had this one for a while. We've actually changed the look of our packaging since then. 
um, but it's the same great powder inside. So I'm going to pull this off and then I'm going to wiggle this off gently. Get my clothespin and then I'm going to sprinkle this fine detail powder all over the surface of these. And it's only going to stick to that second layer of the poinsettia. I'm going to blow the rest away. But you can see how it lightened up so you know that the powder is on there where it's supposed to be. Give it an extra little blow there. Okay. So now I'm going to be using my heat tool. I've got my Wagner heat tool. I always like to heat up my heat tool before I get started on it so that I have a little bit less warping. But we can also use a little bit of extra tape on here when we mount it onto our black layer to make sure that it's not too, let's see here, I just wanna make sure that I don't have any embossing powder there. If you get closer to it, you can just blow any of that excess off. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. And you'll start to see it get dark again, but it's gonna get shiny this time. Oh, that's so pretty. Love this look. And this adds just the right amount of shine to your project. But it's interesting because people will wonder, like, how did you just get it in those certain areas? And it will be our little secret. You don't have to tell your non-card maker friends unless you want to turn them on to card making because embossing is kind of the gateway drug. So isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that. So nice. Okay, let's put this one away and then we're going to do our second one with a different color combination. I'm going to clean my stencil first. I've got the reds all over these. This one, anyway, I have to clean. I'm going to move this because we'll use this again. But I thought it would be pretty to do like reds and golds, reds and golds, and then teals or turquoise and silver. I think those color combinations are really beautiful. And we can use that turquoise and silver one for more of a happy holidays kind of effect. And then we can use the red and green one for a more traditional Christmas card but they're both so pretty. And then I want to know, I really want to know from you guys which one you like better, whether you like the turquoise and silver look or you like the red and gold. Maybe you like them both, but I'd love you to let me know in the comments. Okay, so now I have another piece of white cardstock here that is just covered with embossing powder. So let me, let me get a different one here. Here's one that's not so bad. And then I'm going to Put a little tape on the back to secure this in place. And I'm going to do the same thing again. So we'll make these cards similar as far as the style. We'll get this whole flower down here. And then we'll kind of go off the side a little bit. And then the other two will be off the side. Okay. So for this one, my first color is going to be turquoise C. Now, if you want to go even lighter than that, you can go to a sea glass. Now, I did have a brush laying around here for my turquoise, and I wonder what I did with it. Oh, here it is, hiding. You can go with a sea glass, and then you can make your second color turquoise sea if you want a lighter look. I'm going to go with turquoise sea, and then I'm going to go down to tranquil teal for my darker color. But once again... I'm going to just do that circular motion in here. Heavy handed in the center and then lighter as we go out toward the edges. You know I can't, I can never pass up a turquoise poinsettia. Or a turquoise anything. Turquoise is my jam, you guys know that, right? So Tom, yes, yes, yes. while I'm blending this and doing that leafy layer next do you happen to have a word of the day oh yes oh you do <laughs> okay uh -oh. so um so this oh, is yes. <laughs> this is this goes out to all our uh, viewers who are football fans oh boy you know we watched the packers game last 
last week, and there was a penalty almost every play, it seemed like, didn't it? Every play and on the Packers. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yes. But that wasn't true. But it yes. was it was a messy, just just heavy game, and we got a little bit. I guess you would say flagravated. <laughs> yes, we did. We got very flagravated. <laughs> flagravation, the word of the day. Flagravation. I love it. It's so true. <laughs> All right, now we're going to lay the green on here. And you can see I didn't clean off this green stencil because I really don't have to. Just putting it on there, making sure all the leaves look like they're in a good spot. Looks pretty good. There we go. That'll work. Flag revation. That is the truth. Every time the flag gets thrown, you are incredibly flag revated. It's always after such a good play, too, right? That's right. It's flag revated. <laughs> so now I'm using jelly bean green again. And you know, there was a little uh, fresh asparagus left on there. But that's okay because you're still getting that pop of bright green. It's just a tiny little bit on there. It's not really hurting the design. I was telling Tom earlier about how I've been using fresh asparagus in the last couple of videos, and every time I fill out the description, asparagus is one of those words that's really hard for me to spell, and I have to think of it not as asparagus. I have to think of it as asparagus. And if I say it that way in my head, I can always spell it properly. <laughs> asparagus. <laughs> Sounds like some Greek warrior or something. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> My grandfather used to say asparagus. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. <laughs> I've never seen you worry about mixing your colors, though, on your, on your um, blending brushes. I don't worry about that at all. I, I really don't. I You can just rub off that color. The only thing I wouldn't do is mix colors that are not in the same color family. Like, I wouldn't take a yellow blending brush and then do purple on it and then try to go back to yellow. But I would do, you know, grass green and fresh asparagus or turquoise and tranquil teal because you can just rub that color back off on a paper towel and you're still in the same color family. So if, it's a, if there's a little overlap, it's not going to make that much of a difference. I never wash my blending brushes. I just rub off the color and we're good to go. All right, so I did the same thing on this one. I did the jelly bean green and then I came in on those petals with a little bit of fresh asparagus. Now I'm going to add those dots again, but I have to clean this stencil because this time I'm going to do the opposite where the first time I used this stencil, I'm going to back up a little bit. The first time I used this stencil, I did the tranquil teal against the red flowers. This time I'm going to do these little dots or berries in red against the turquoise flowers. But remember, always wipe the back. Make sure the back and the front are very dry before you put it back up against your piece of artwork here. And again, I'm just lining it up by lining up the centers of these flowers. And as long as they look pretty centered, everything else should be fine. And I'm not going to go into the centers of these. I'm just going to do the outside. So I'm going to use the red velvet on this. So this is kind of a nice... Um, color combination of these two different cards. They're, they're the same color combination, but different spots. Now, let me find a little red brush somewhere. I think I have one. Is this red? This looks red. Let me get my paper towel and it's got a little pinkish hue. It's got a hue. <laughs> All right. So I'll get in there with some of this red velvet again. And now I'm just going to go around and do the dots, the little berries. So sort of like holly berries or something. Just being careful not to go in the centers. Now, if you, again, if you are worried about going in the centers, like you don't think, you know, I might not see it, go ahead and throw a little masking magic 
or a little pixie tape or something across the stencil just on the center of the flowers so that you don't bite you don't get it in there by accident Tom and I were talking about the difference between when we lived in Philadelphia and moving out to Wisconsin in the Midwest in in Philadelphia and the East Coast, we say by accident. That could happen by accident. Um, and in the Midwest, they say on accident. So that could happen on accident. And I still say it East Coast style, Tom. I've kind of, ooh, that's so pretty. Look, Tom. Woo. How nice that is. I love that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add my tranquil teal into the centers here. And this stencil's all cleaned off from the last time. Might have a little embossing ink on it, but that's okay. That's not gonna affect anything. In fact, that can only help our embossing ink get in there better. Um, I haven't, I'm, some of my words are a little more Midwestern now, but somebody was telling me that they like listening to the way I say Florida and orange, because I don't say Florida and orange. I've got my East Coast going, Florida orange. You gotta love me. Okay, now I'm going to use this small brush. It doesn't matter which size brush you use. And I'm going to add tranquil teal starting in the center and working that tranquil teal out toward the edges. You know I'm going to love this color combination. Mm-mm-mm. Kitty corner. Kitty corner, and on the East Coast, it's catty corner. Yeah, we all have our things that we say. Okay, now I am going to clean this before I, oh, love, love, love. I just love the depth that that brings into that stencil, that little layer. And I like that it's all kind of, they look like hearts at the ends of the petals. They're so lovely. And I am going to wipe down. You can see that just comes right through on the back. Supermarket. Supermarket, right, and grocery store. But it's even different because here in the Midwest, they say grocery. Some places they say Some do. places. Yeah, grocery. Grocery. And we say grocery. I'm not saying one's right and one's wrong. I'm just saying that. It's just the fun of. The fun of language, right? Regional, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's add some embossing and watermark ink to this using that jumbo dauber. Hey, where's your music today, Tom? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know people are asking, no I'm, music today? I was enjoying the show. <laughs> All right. And again, I'm just pouncing that color in there. And you can see it gets nice and dark. There we go. There's something so festive about turquoise too. Maybe it's because it's very wintry and it feels like it just works so well with the reds and the greens, but I always think of the holidays when I see turquoise. Turquoise is that kind of perfect color for every season. It can be the ocean or it can be the winter. And I love that. Okay, so now we're going to add some of that clear powder on top of that. And I have my clothes pin close by. Might as well load it onto the clothes pin now. Both of these, both color combinations are great. So whichever one you choose, it's gonna be beautiful. Or make them both. You know, make a whole bunch of ones in different color combinations. This way you don't get bored looking at the same thing all the time when you're working. That's another thing. I just enjoy the, you know, mixing it up because it's fun. Here we go. 
So pretty. Mm -mm. Melting embossing powder is always magical. It never gets old. 25 years later <laughs> of crafting, it still never gets old. All right, and then you can see all of that beautiful shine in just those teal areas. So pretty. So let's turn these two into cards. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to put these onto black panels. I know, shocking, right? Shocking, shocking. <laughs> and we are going to use a little bit of extra ink. I mean, a little bit of extra tape on here, not ink, a little extra tape because we want to make sure that you know, we take care of the warping. Get this laid down right here. Okay. Now you certainly could cut these panels out using Master Layouts 2 if you want. A little white spot in there. I don't know what that is. I might dab that with a little turquoise Copic marker so you don't see it. I have embossing powder everywhere. I was very messy today, that's for sure. It's all over my shirt. My shirt has a thin film of embossing powder because I was blowing the embossing powder. I need a Swiffer for myself. I'm dusty. Okay, so... We could put this one onto turquoise C and this one onto red hot, or we could reverse it and do that and that, which I think is really pretty because I think then the flowers themselves become the isolated color in each card and that makes them stand out a little bit more. Just my humble opinion, but I think we're gonna go for it. You could do it either way though, whatever you like better. So this is the Tranquil Teal cardstock. And since I have those dots in Tranquil Teal, that's kind of working together with that. And then over here, I have the red dots. And I could have used red velvet cardstock. I just happened to, my tape is gone, but I think that'll work. Um, I just happen to have a red hot card base here, and I think either one looks good because it's such a small amount. Like, we could have used turquoise C here instead as well, and that would have worked just fine. Now, I will need another tape runner, tape refill. So let's refill this real quickly. And then we're going to add our greetings. So... For the, um, for the turquoise one, let's do Happy Holidays. I happen to already have tape on the back of this. So we'll put that right here. And then for the red one, let's use Merry Christmas. And I already have some tape on the back of this one. These were like things that I was going to do and then changed my mind. So I had them stuck to a, a thing. And now let's add some pearls in here. So let's see what we have. I've got all kinds of pearls. I don't know that I have enough little baby silver ones. I should though, let's see what I can do. Okay, so we'll put silver on this one. Let's see what we have. Okay, so I've got my connect glue and I'm just gonna put three little dots, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three there. And then let me get my pick and stick tool. Saw it a minute ago, here she is. And then I have a bunch of them here at the bottom, so I'm just gonna work right from this little jar. 
And I don't know what I like better for Christmas, silver or gold. I like them both. I have done silver cards. I've done gold cards. I think both are just spectacular for the holidays. Any little bit of shimmer and shine is beautiful. So let me pull these out. I've been using a lot of silver ones with some of my snowman cards, so I'm starting to get a little low. I have to get a new pack. Now the black would look really cool too if you wanted to have just a little pop of black in there to kind of go along with the greeting and that little black layer. You could certainly add some black. That would work. So Tom, uh, did, I, did I talk to you already about the centers of these flowers? Did I tell you about that? I don't think I did. No. I may have said it in another video. But um, I was doing a video one time and I was talking about doing the leaves and the petals different colors. And one of our viewers who knows a lot about plants and stuff told me that these are all leaves. The only part of this that's a flower is these little dots that are in the center that are usually yellow. Wow. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, that, that's um, that's pretty cool. It, it's flowers and plants in general. You know, you're always finding out about things that, that are surprising. I, Absolutely, just I like where plants are native to and stuff. I mean, it's not my strength. No, not my strength either. You and I were raised in the city. You even more than me, because I was just outside the city. <laughs> Tom and I are both from Philadelphia. And my mom did have a garden growing up, though, and I thought that was pretty fun. She grew peppers and tomatoes and stuff, but I don't think you would have had the space for a garden at your place, right? I, I grew corn one, uh, one year. Somehow, I, I, uh, I don't remember exactly how, but I... I... I don't even know if I had anything to do with it, but a corn stalk grew, <laughs> and it became mine. <laughs> you took care of it? <laughs> One stalk. Oh, my gosh. That's think, so cute. I think it was like, oh, no, we grew, uh, we grew beans and, yeah, some carrots and things. Did you do container gardening at your place? No, it was just a, you know, little tiny, tiny patch of dirt in the backyard. Oh, how fun. Yeah, the good old days. Sometimes I think, you know, I want to be a gardener, and other times I think that's what the grocery store does for you. <laughs> you can just go down there and get whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so there are the two finished cards. Let's zoom in just a little bit on them. We've got a little jumper there. There we go. So we've got our turquoise one with that shine in there and the silver accents. And then we've got the gold one, the red one with the red accents and then the little gold accents. So if you wanted to, you could also take this up a notch and add a few little pearls in and around the greeting if you wanted. Or you can just leave it like that and just have those embellishments in the center of the flowers. So what do you think, Tom? Which is your favorite? Well, I love looking at both of them. They both, I love the space that you left. Um, and um, I think it would depend on the day that I looked at it. But I do like, like Christmas Eve, I probably would like the red one. Yeah. But, like, after Christmas, I would like the uh, blue one. The turquoise? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say which one I like better because they both have turquoise, so I do like them both. But I want to hear from you guys which ones you like better. Which one of these two would be your choice? And, of course, you could put whatever greeting you want. These greetings are from our um, holiday sentiment sheets, and they're cut with our holiday, with our sentiment strips dies. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun, and we hope that you had a good time today. We hope that you enjoyed chatting with us in the comments. It's been so much fun for us to chat with you. I know we're not there yet, but I know we always have fun, so I know I'm speaking the truth. Tom and I will be back next Tuesday with another Stampin' Chat Live. 
in the meantime, you guys, stay safe and healthy. We love you all so very much, and we'll see you again mwah, real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.